Hi, I, uh, my name is Melissa Sweeney. I want to welcome you to the Santa Monica Public Library. Tonight we are uh, holding the community meeting for the Arclight 4th Street project. And thank you for coming. Um, we'll be giving a presentation and then conducting a question and answer. And uh, we hope you'll participate. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping first. Uh, if you haven't signed in, please do so at the uh, front desk. If you wish to speak, uh, you could fill out a speaker card like this and we will call them in order. Uh, if you wish to make a written comment, uh, we have forms for that as well and just hand them in at the front desk. Uh, so I'd like to introduce you to our team here, John Manavian, Mark Weinstock, Gretchen McCourt, and Lewis Grace. And uh, it will, uh, we will begin with a presentation on the Arclight uh, company itself and then move on to a description of the project and the architectural features of it. So take it away. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Mark Weinstock. Thank you for coming. Uh, I figured I'd just uh, give everyone a little um, understanding of the history of our company and kind of where we started and how Arclight came about. So uh, we've been in the exhibition uh, industry for about 70 years. In 1946, the company was founded, and back then it was a drive-in movie theater company, and in, uh, it was popular in the 50s and 60s. And then we moved into the um, uh, walk-in movie theater uh, business from the 60s to the 80s, um, bringing megaplexes uh, into uh, into into the forefront of our of our business. And from there, we evolved into uh, ArcLight. So today, um, Pacific Theaters is the name of our um, the, the company we started with, um, there's 96 screens, uh, Pacific Theaters screens. Uh, what you're looking at here is the uh, one of the first, the Cinerama Dome. Uh, that opened in 1963, and at the time, uh, the Cinerama Dome had the largest movie th uh, movie screen in the world. Um, and since then, we've, we've evolved. We've opened up uh, more Pacific Theaters locations, uh, most notably the, the Grove and... Um, uh, let's see, there's a Cinerama. This is the uh, the Grove uh, that you may be familiar with, and also um, the uh, uh, the Pacific Theaters at uh, the Americana at Brand in, in Glendale. And then uh, in 2002, the company saw a need to reshape the exhibition industry and really redefine how audiences engaged with film. And what we were looking for was a kind of a game changer, something to really... Um, distinguish uh, the movie-going experience from what the current offerings were. So Arclight, Arclight was really born out of that. The purpose of Arclight is to create um, opportunities for transformational experiences through film, and it really exists to meet the needs of moviegoers uh, who seek a place of care and respect and who value um, the experience of a greater connection between film, between other guests, crew, and the environment. Um, we were, uh, Arclight was the first uh, cinema company in North America to introduce reserved seating, for example. And what's important to, to know and remember is that you know, we are, we're a local company. We were um, kind of born here in, in L.A. Our offices are in L.A. We have a deep connection to the Los Angeles community, which is important because so much of film going and the film going community, creative community, lives in, in Los Angeles. We have great relationships with the movie studios, many of whom are, are headquartered here as well. So we're deeply entrenched, um, and this is our backyard, so we really understand this market and, and the needs of, of moviegoers. So um, with that, uh, we wanted to uh, introduce you to really what Arclight, um, the, kind of the features of Arclight, get you, uh, let you know a little bit more about Arclight. Um, the first Arclight, as we mentioned, opened in Hollywood in, uh, in 2002. And from there, uh, we opened up in Sherman Oaks in 2007. That was our second location. We opened up uh, in beach cities near Manhattan Beach after that, and in Pasadena, and then in uh, La Jolla, California. Since that time, we've opened up in Bethesda, Maryland, uh, near Washington, D.C. We've opened up in uh, Glenview, Illinois, and also in Culver City. And at the end of this year, we'll be opening up in Chicago and uh, in Santa Monica Place, uh, and that development here in Santa Monica. So we'll have uh, 10 arc lights by the end of this year and we're looking to uh, continue our growth in, in the Santa Monica area uh, on 4th Street. Uh, so with that, I want to uh, introduce Gretchen McCourt, and she will give you a little more flavor about uh, Arclight and, and what we're about. 
I think this one's on too. So as Mark said, um, the first arc light in Hollywood was opened in, in 2002, and it was really born out of our, of Chris Foreman, our CEO's love of going to the movies, and wanted to address the things that, you know, just really made movie going a hassle and made people stay away from the movies. So uh, the first thing that we introduced is reserve seating. So one of the things that Arclight brings to a development or to a community is, is we don't have lines. You won't have holdout lines in front of a theater. There's no lines at the box office because you buy your tickets online um, on our website and you get to choose what seat you're going to sit in. So you know exactly where you're going when you walk into the theater. There's no exchanging of the ticket. It's scanned right at the box, or right at the door, and you walk into your seat. You can do that 10 minutes before your movie or 10 seconds before your movie. It's up to you. Um, we also um, took out, we don't have any advertising. The experience is, is really to kind of take you out of your everyday life, give you a little bit of space that, you know, we don't find very often anymore. So there's no screen advertising, there's no advertising in the lobby. You can see um, the colors, the, you know, the atmosphere, there's no neon. It's, it's just a really soothing, you know, soothing experience. Um, we have a small cafe and bar in each one of our, um, our theaters. It's meant to, again, bring you deeper into the movie. It's a place to discuss a movie before you see it, a place to sit down, have a glass of wine, discuss the movie after. Um, we always have a, a small retail space that it brings in books, memorabilia, just pieces to bring, you know, again, to bring a, a deeper look into the movies. We have exhibit space in all of our theaters. These are our storyboard walls. Um, they're not digital, they are, they are individual, um, movie posters, this is one of my favorite ones. We opened Arclight La Jolla with this. Those are all um, historical, international James Bond one sheets that we had curated for, for the wall. So each Arclight has a little different shape, but each one is about 100 movie posters and they change monthly. Some, I think we have one that's one image. Yeah, there's one that's one image from Interstellar. This is our new theater in Bethesda, Maryland. But in her, uh, so sometimes it's one image from a film, sometimes it's a mixture of, but it's something that's unique to Arclight that you won't see anyplace else. We also have exhibits um, from, from movies. This is the actual hotel they used, and there's a photo here if you wanna look at it on the, a little closer on the wall from the Grand Budapest Hotel. This was the actual model that they used from the film, and the filmmaker wanted it in one place only, and that was Arclight in Los Angeles, so that as fans were going to see the movie, they could actually have a little bit of behind the scenes information. We also do Q and A's. There's Leo. He was at uh, at Arclight Hollywood doing a doing a Q and A last winter, but uh, probably um, I don't know two or three times a week between the theaters in Los Angeles. We'll have we'll have a Q and A or a panel. Uh, we have documentaries where we bring in a panel on the topic with the filmmakers. We bring in the stars, the filmmakers. And then we also have a piece that's unique to Arclight called Arclight Stories, where we will ahead of time film with um, the director, the producer, the stunt coordinators, the costume designers, something really unique about the film. And then we show that piece after and we, we talk about it in our greets. We have a greeter who introduces each film and will tell, you, tell the audience that there's something after the film. Um, to stay and see that again, it's a unique look that nobody's doing except Arclight. Um, this is one of our auditoriums. We have a, our award-winning black box auditoriums and you can see you know, there's no distractions. Again, it goes back to that getting you out of everyday life. Um, the dark colors, all reserved seating. Um, even our lights are, are designed so that our exit lights aren't next to the screen so they don't take your eyes off. The sound folds are such that when you're sitting in the seat, you don't see, this, you don't see the lights everything to just really allow you to focus uninterrupted on that screen. Okay, um, so those are, you know, those are some of the things that make Arclight different. And when we get asked the question of, you know, why a, why a second location in Santa Monica? And I was telling uh, Melissa, I was the opening manager of the AMC Santa Monica 7 that's here. So since um, 1990, I, w I opened that theater, and at that time, you know, the, the promenade certainly wasn't what it was, Santa Monica Place certainly wasn't what it was, 
and at the height of our opening at AMC, Mann's opening, and then at the time it was Lo Cineplex, and then and then Lowe's after that. Um, these theater, those theaters did um, almost two million people, and it was just you know a great place to eat, to shop, to go. And like I said, Third Street was was still growing; it wasn't what it was now. And this past year, those theaters did less than six hundred thousand people. And the, the offering for the people of Santa Monica is just you know, not what they deserve, not what it needs to be. And as you guys know, you know the, the, they travel out of Santa Monica. They're going to um, Marina del Rey. They're going to Westside Pavilion, going to Century City. And so as we look at how many screens were there then, were, how many screens and seats were in Santa Monica when we were at that almost two million, two million people mark, and what we have now with the criterion closing, with the seats being you know, changed and removed from AMC, uh, the two AMCs now, and Lemley, um, with our, our site in Santa Monica Place and 4th Street, we will you know, be able to bring movie going back to Santa Monica and people to be able to stay here instead of traveling out. And it also allows us to have the variety of product that we know the people of Santa Monica want. We Arclight plays the big blockbuster movies, we play the specialty films, we play documentaries, we have a weekly retrospective series in all of our, of all of our theaters, and we've just entered into a partnership with Sundance and Slamdance where monthly we bring films that you know, people just don't see in theaters, and, and that series has really taken off, and our plan is to bring that series to Santa Monica as well. And I was just approached um, just this week from DreamWorks Animation about the theaters in Santa Monica, and they want to do a weekly series with all of the DreamWorks Animation products so that there's always something for families on a Sunday morning. They know at time every week there's going to be something different. So we've really got a lot of unique things that are, uh, that are going to happen here in, for moviegoers that just haven't happened in a long time. Yeah, it's very exciting for us. We've been working on this for about eight years, and I, I don't think we ever dreamed that we would end up with two locations. Uh, Bob Apteker is here from Mace Ridge as our partner on Santa Monica, Santa Monica Place, and they will also be our development partner on uh, this location at on 4th Street. Uh, we'll be the tenant, and uh, Mace Ridge will be uh, the developer directly uh, connected to the city. Uh, this particular drawing shows the context. It's the, the theater environment that Gretchen was talking about, and for us, the opportunity to open 12 screens at Santa Monica Place and have up to 16 screens at uh, 4th Street is really exciting for us. We see this really acting as one theater when it's all open and the opportunity to really have a great uh, product mix uh, at this location. And it's interesting, even with the remodeling that's being done by the existing theaters, ours will still be the state of the art in terms of slow floor, uh, digital pro projection, and everything else. It'll be the first new state of the art at the Mace Rich Mall as well as at this location. This slide shows the, the parking conditions, and I think the city has done a wonderful job. We were talking earlier about being proactive in creating these parking districts. And uh, this site has always been slated for a theater in support of that ob objective of bringing theater goers back to Santa Monica and not have the leakage of uh, citizens in Santa Monica leaving to go to theaters elsewhere. So with the loss of that parking, fortunately, um, in prior years it was a proposed, but now we have garage number six that not only was demolished and picked up the spaces that were there, but it also picked up the spaces that will be displaced when the theater goes on this property. So from a parking standpoint, um, I think, you know, the city's looking at the promenade almost like a large mall and uh, trying to serve the needs of the restaurants and uh, theater goers as well as the, the retail merchants. If you're familiar, we're right in between a couple little shops in Wells Fargo in the corner. This is the future Arclight site. It uh, presents a lot of challenges for us. It's a 30,000 square foot footprint and we're filling every inch of it and we're having to go uh, vertical. Uh, a typical theater for us is 50 to 60,000 square feet on one level. When you now put in uh, uh, vertical transportation, escalators, stairs, uh, elevators, it begins to eat up quite a bit of the, the space and we've been forced to go vertical and go multi-levels which 
uh, creates complications, also creates some interesting challenges and opportunities. The ground floor, and one of the challenges here is that we couldn't bring theater all the way down to the ground floor because we wanted to create a pedestrian orientation. So what you see in orange is the retail restaurant uh, space is oriented to 4th Street. These will be controlled and leased by Mace Ridge and purposely done so that we don't have walls but we have glass and activity on the pedestrian level. And you can see the entrance on the far left, uh, grand uh, stairway as well as escalators. And for us, I'm going to kind of move off the sec second floor but go to the third floor because the I think the, the great it's not an innovation, but we knew that from the way we like to see what we call the customer journey, we don't want to have a bunch of levels on this theater. Everybody's going to their level to watch a movie. We're, we're bringing everybody to the third floor, which is our iconic lobby gathering area, cafe bar. Um, and then from there, they have theaters on that level. They go up one level or they go down one level to the, the movie experience. And it's now centralized and really is a communal uh, experience. This is the, uh, the, third, the fourth floor, essentially. And then just going backwards a little bit, the, you don't really see these two auditoriums there. Auditorium two and possibly one is what we call the large screen format. This is what many movie uh, theaters are doing as an answer to IMAX. Uh, we'd be looking at a 60 to 70 foot screen in these theaters and obviously catering to the big action films that are typically out at summertime, the big blockbusters, uh, but just gives us an opportunity to do something a little bit different. This is showing you the cross section. Um, again, you can see on the left side, the grand stair, how you go to the lobby, which is showing up as the middle area, but is effectively the third level. And then from there, you're dropping up or down to the uh, various auditoriums. These are preliminary visual renderings of what that could look like. So you can see we're trying to really celebrate and not make it just uh, a, a vertical thing, but how do you make it exciting as you're going up to the third level? This is a view at that third level looking back at the cafe bar and the concession area. And then looking at the iconic um, storyboard that Gretchen talked about, the departure board, all the features, if you're familiar with Arclight and any of our locations being brought in here so the Arclight customer feels very, very comfortable that they're getting that, that brand delivery that uh, we've been so successful at. With that, I want to turn it over to Lewis Grace from Jardy and for him to talk a little bit about the, uh, the exterior architecture. Hello. Thank you for coming. Um, this, this project is close, it's close to our hearts because we're in Santa Monica with multiple projects. We, um, we've worked with Arclight on the first Santa Monica place and we've enjoyed the relationship. And this was really a chance that we can start from a fresh point. And um, we, we went through a number of studies and really this one was the front runner. And it really came to the front because it um, had a good tie to the Cinerama Dome. And um, it also worked along with the branding that um, Arclight has used along through all their theaters. And <clears throat> this really became a project that we could take advantage of this front facade, take advantage of the circulation from the city. Um, that was the diagram in the beginning where you start to see how the city circulates through 4th Street in the alleys and around 3rd, um, uh, excuse me, through 3rd Street, around the alleys and onto 4th Street. Um, as you can see in this rendering, we're, we're the scale of the, uh, the levels that John was talking about. You can see the mass and the top. And a lot of times with the cinema, you're left with a lot of exit corridors and a back of house. And with this design, it enabled us to tie in the retail and have a separation from the retail and the cinema itself. So on the left side, the L, the up upside down L, is the lobby. So it's really opening out to the space. It's opening out and you can see the, the, new, the proposed plaza um, and it really creates this iconic um, overall facade. Um, the material is a very simple white that's recyclable material. It's not shiny, it's matte, um, not to be overpowering and not create a, a nuisance for the neighbors. Um, and then the, in the retail, you can see how it interlocks into that lobby area below, or the uh, lobby area above. Um, here you can see the same view 
a straight on, a typical architectural elevation. And then this is one of our studies which we're working on the Third Street side and we're playing with the, the materials of it. Um, the, the majority, the, the accent point is really the front facade. Um, we don't want the building to take away from the, the surrounding, the three surrounding facades, we don't want it to take away from the front facade. Um, but we again want to be able to have an iconic element on this alley that draws you down and brings you through this court, this third court, to, um, to know where Arc, Arc Light is. Because in our studies, a lot of people are circulating through these alleys. So that's what this is representing. And this, the image on the left is the existing parking structure, just to give you an, a, a comparison. And this is our, the, this is our project timeline that we're shooting on. Right now, we've just started the uh, EIR process. Um, and in a couple weeks, we'll go in to ARB um, for the float up. We'll kind of give them a first look, um, get any reaction, anything, comments, we want to, stuff to develop. Uh, and then we'll, in summer and fall, we'll do additional meetings with the neighborhood, get their reaction on it. Um, then later in 2015, planning com hearing, city council later in the next year. Um, and then our final ARB and coastal hearings will be in 2016. And hopefully starting construction 2016 with a two year construction. Thank you, Lewis. Um, so I have one speaker card, one request to speak, um, and that is Colette Hanna. Uh, let me pass the mic to you. Thank you. Um, Colette Hanna with Downtown Santa Monica. Obviously, we've um, received this presentation at one of our previous board meetings, and we're just here to express our support. Obviously, we um, appreciate the design, the ground floor retail, and the retail and restaurant opportunities that are now brought over to Fourth Street and the increased activity on Fourth Street. Um, uh, as I mentioned, we love the design. The board really loves the design. Um, we think that the um, the seating and the use itself is a necessary addition to downtown in terms of entertainment options and expanding the entertainment options. Um, and the board, I think their only request is that it just moves quickly, uh, that it moves expeditiously through the city's process. So the board definitely uh, wants to provide its full support and looks forward to the project ha happening. Thank you very much. Well, with that, um, we want to thank you for attending the meeting this evening. And if you have any further questions, we have a website, which is ArcLight. Fourth Street, fourth being spelled out, uh, dot com. And there is a um, form there for further information, and uh, we will get back to you as soon as we get the uh, request for more information. So we really appreciate your coming out this evening and uh, look forward to meeting all of you again. Thank you. <laughs>